Hey guys, Richard here. So today I'm going to go through a day in my life of learning languages. Now the reason I decided to make this video after not being on YouTube for so long is because one of my students who I teach English to asked me about what is the best way to learn a language. And it's really a, it's kind of a bad question but a good question in one way. Uh, well I guess in both ways. The reason being is because learning languages is kind of like going to the gym in a sense and I'm going to use the gym analogy here quite a bit because when you go to the gym you could be using the best forms in the world you could be applying the most scientific methods you could be like following the best diet but if you just stop after a few days it doesn't matter how good those first few days were it makes no difference in the long run so what I basically say is do whatever method ensures consistency. So if you're using a method and everyone on the internet, all the polyglots are saying, hey, you know what, that's not a good method, you know, it's 10% slower, or you could increase by 25% here, or if you focus on, you know, these thousand words, whatever, um, and you don't like constantly do that, then it doesn't matter because you're just gonna stop anyway. So my methodology to learning languages is constantly evolving, and it actually is quite different for different languages. And I guess what I'm going to try and do with this video is I'm gonna show you a day in my life. Now I work full time as a developer, so this is going to be over like the whole day. Um, and as a developer, it takes up a lot of my time. And then also I have a life outside of uh, work, obviously with my wife. So this is going to, you're gonna see spliced parts from the day. Now I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of my day. So basically it's um, 8.45 in the morning. Wow, this went really long. Uh, I start work in about 15 minutes. I've got my Anki up on the screen here, which hopefully you guys can see. And you can see I've got to focus on uh, Chinese, Esperanto, and German. I've even got English in there, but I'll show that another day. Uh, so basically, what I'm doing with these languages at the moment is Esperanto. I'm, I'm fluent in Esperanto, and what I'm doing now is just adding layers of complexity to my fluency by basically uh, learning obscure words or like interesting turns of phrases and stuff that I find while reading books and stuff. So that's more a maintenance uh, deck, I guess, in a way. Uh, then I've got Chinese. Now, Chinese is my focus language. It's my active language. It's the one I'm putting all my effort into right now. And then as kind of like a language that I'm just doing on the side and I'm passively learning is German. So if we were to put this into a gym context, my Esperanto is I'm you know, I'm bench pressing, I'm smashing out, I don't know what a good bench press is, let's, let's, you know, I'm, I'm going to say on one arm, I'm lifting 50 kilos, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm doing two of those at the same time. I'm doing really well. Okay, so Esperanto is sweet. Now, my Chinese is like, I'm kind of new to the gym type of thing. I've, I've learned the basic forms, I've got like all the basic movements down, and now I'm just kind of going through the rhythm of learning piece by piece by piece and building up that muscle. So I'm at a low stage at the moment. Uh, now, with German, German, I'm just passive. So German's actually an interesting one for me. I chose German purely because my mate is learning German. Uh, and I just use it when I need to not do Chinese. Like, I, my brain gets burnt out. So basically, all I'm doing is practicing listening comprehension at the moment. And I'm not doing reading, I'm not doing speaking. And maybe in six months, I'll start moving on to speaking. And then eventually after that, I'll move on to reading and stuff, which is probably quite different to a lot of people. But I kind of like to approach a language first by just listening to it quite a bit before I actually try and use it just to get an ear for the language and to try and get a natural feel for the language before I move into like smashing it. Now with Esperanto, th that, was, that did not happen at all. Like I went complete opposite direction. That's because it was my first language and really there wasn't much listening comprehension or listening material for that language when I started out. Uh, and with Chinese, I have a very heavy focus on listening, but I also have a secondary heavy focus on speaking. Um, reading, I can read like pretty basic Chinese at this stage. I've probably got like a thousand plus characters under my belt, but I'm not really focused on it and I'm kind of just absorbing those characters as I need it. And it's quite interesting with Chinese because I have a very narrow focus on the type of vocabulary and stuff I'm learning at the moment. And it's all based around fishing, which might sound kind of crazy that I'm learning about such an obscure topic while I'm still kind of like a low level or mid level Chinese speaker. And the reason being is because my father-in-law, who's Chinese, his absolute love in this world is fishing. Like he would give up his daughter for fishing, okay? But he doesn't speak a word of English. 
So the more I learn about this topic in Chinese, the more he opens up and he talks about it, and the more kind of like comprehensible input I get around this specific topic. And also, uh, this teaches you a lot of day-to-day -day words that you would use in like, I guess they're kind of like general, uh, general verbs that like a child would learn because you know you're talking about picking up things, you know, play, you're going to a place, you're walking on certain stuff, you're you're finding certain things. These are things that you would learn early in childhood, and then later on you'd learn the more complex stuff about talking about politics and things like that. So I'm kind of like started in that area and I've expanded my way out, which means I have this pretty good vocabulary now about marine animals and about things that happens down at the beach. Um, like I can even talk about the body parts of a fish now, which is kind of crazy because you've got like um, Wei Qi, which is like the tail fin and then uh, Bei Qi, which is like the back fin and you've got the Lin Pian, which is the scales of the fish and the Sai, which is the gills and then I can talk about all that type of stuff like skinning a fish and things like that because that's stuff that's going to be actually useful to me. Uh, but if I'm going to go speak to a random Chinese person on the street, the majority of that stuff would never be useful. But it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Uh, with German, what I've been doing is I've been watching a lot of like movies that I love in English but with German um, dubs. And then I'm just taking words that I think are common or like I'll freeze frame the, the actual German series that I'm watching and I will find out what that scene's about and then I'll create some vocabulary around that scene and then I'll put that into my deck. And I'll show you later today how I go through and create all this type of stuff. So this is gonna be a long video. And Esperanto is basically, I just pick up a book, I do some reading, find some interesting words or phrases that I haven't learned before and I just chuck them in there. So we're gonna start with the review first. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Um, I can't get that out of that really dark mode that I was going to use on the computer. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys on the phone uh, basically my review method. So I've got Esperanto here. So the first one, uh, oh god, it's in dark mode as well. Um, I don't know if you guys like dark mode or not, but like for example, it's asked me the word here for arma, which is kiraso. So I just go, yep, cool. And next, I've got the sentence. So it's like, Canapo estas salon meblo, longa sejo por pluraj personoj kun dorsa pogilo kaj remburita sid loko. Because padded is remburita. So here this is using a closed methodology where I need to fill it in and it gives me like an English hint. Broccoli, broccolo, broccolo, yep, cool. Uh, a puddle. This is actually an interesting word that I found the other day. Um, it's flaco, apparently. I've been using laghetto for like puddle for like forever or like or something like that. So I don't know, I was quite interesting about that one. Then I've got a lot of, you'll notice that a lot of these are actually dictionary definitions if you speak Esperanto. So this is um, bitumi estas covri au shmidi per bitumo. So here I've literally just taken stuff out of the dictionary because that's where my Esperanto level is at. Or I've got here one that's from um, uh, the Prince of Mars or Princess of Mars. Uh, which is a book that I've read in Esperanto and I, I really enjoy. Anyway, it's like Donante Alvi and Libera Formo la stranga manuscripton de Capitano Cata mi credes que quelque vorto pri tiu e di marquin de persono interessos vin. So, yep, that remarkable person. So I'm going to quickly smash through the Esperanto because you guys, and it, you don't need to see it all, but maybe if I come across some like interesting tidbits, I'll share it with you. Luti estas confixi metallain petsoin al metante inter ili fanditan metallon sed ne fandante la concernamen petsoin mem. Okay, so I've just finished my maintenance deck with Esperanto, so now I'm going to move on to Chinese. So with Chinese, I've got actually two decks. I've got a speaking deck and a listening deck. The speaking deck is what I do first. Um, that way I don't get like little hints from listening to stuff first. So I've got 73 cards in the speaking deck. So I'm going to quickly smash my way through this. So as you can see, this is what it is. It's like that dog is looking at something. Yeah, and then I've just got the Chinese translation there. And I've got black and dirty suit. So that'd be like Or Ah, I hate that. I've got to fix up my card. Okay, next one. The hunter climbs the cage. Yep, okay. The man is standing on top of the container. You could also say Shang Mian. The hunter is standing on the raft. 
那个男人站在法子上。Yep, cool. That dinosaur is looking at something. <laughs> 那只恐龙正在看着东西。So again, I'm going to smash my way through these.、Uh, so I'm just got. And if I find any interesting cards, I'll share them with you. And last one, 律师在挥手。啊，那个律师在挥手。I forgot that that. Okay, so I have done the speaking portion. Unfortunately, now、uh, it's actually work time because I spent so much time setting up this video.、Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some breakfast. Wow, you can see when I like study, I like scratch myself. I don't know why, and now I've got like this red mark. Anyway, I'm going to grab some breakfast from the fridge, and I guess you guys can kind of come with me because this is actually part of my study routine as well. Now, the reason this is part of my study routine is because I actually always just randomly try talk in the language that I'm speaking. Please ignore the dirtiness of this house right now. Oh God, the lighting here is terrible. So, for example,、um, I see my cat there. Uh, 那是我的猫。呃、uh, ，它总是每天都想吃饭。呃、uh, ，我它，我是要说它一直想吃饭。呃、uh, ，现在我在我的厨房里。呃、uh, ，我需要把我的早饭从冰箱里拿出来。What? Do I need the lock on the end there? Doesn't matter. Um, so I'm grabbing some breakfast. What do we got? We've got zero. Uh, what we are now got. 还有这个 loaded mac and cheese， 中文怎么说 loaded mac and cheese？ 我觉得我不要吃啊，这是我黑色的猫啊，它世界语的名字是啊 crepusco。I suppose I should probably say that in Esperanto. Um, ĉi tiu estas mia alia kato. Lia nomo estas crepusco, kiu signifas la tempo inter la nokto kaj la tago, kaj estas tiu periodo de lumo. Kaj li ankaŭ havas ĉina nomon. Lia tada ĉina nomo. Oh, so he also has a Chinese name. His Chinese name is Hei Hei, which is just little black, I guess. Or it's、uh, Xiao Zai because he's always trying to steal food. Xiao Zai is like thief. Anyway, I gotta quickly grab some food. So we're going to have lamb korma. I have no idea how to say that in Chinese. If you do know, let me know because this is a common word that I'm probably gonna need quite a bit.、Um, and I've got these kind of prepared dishes at the moment because I'm smashing the the gym and I'm trying to get my health to a better stage than it is right now.、Uh, not because I want to get like muscly or anything, but It actually stems from my love of languages because, basically, the better I get physically, I've noticed that my mental clarity improves, which improves my ability to learn languages. So it's just kind of a random thing. Anyway, I've got two minutes here, so while standing here, I'll just do other stuff. Like, for example, ah, na shi wo di san jiao mao. Ah, ta de ming zi shi lily. Ah, na shi yi zhong hua. 那它英文那是一种花，呃，另一种文我不知道怎么说，可能那是啊、呃、荷花。他们两个都现在想呃吃饭，但是他们已经吃了。啊、uh, ，so yeah, I just spoke some random Chinese. I was practicing then. Um, so now I potentially practice um. Speaking in Esperanto while waiting here, and I often do this. I like to just code switch randomly, so I'd be like, "Ah, hodia do kio mi devas fari do hodia mi kredas ke do mi havas kelkajn taskojn por mi laboreo mi devas programi el shooten sistemon kiu similas al Steam el shootilo por mi fermao chare ili havas internet de la fermao programon." Kun oni davas ofte el shooti po de gista tigi lo safaron mem. So yeah, that's that's another example. Anyway, this is almost ready. Breakfast is served. So I'm just having some lamb korma. I forgot to mention that I work full time from home. So I'm a developer. I work from home. However, like every two weeks, I just go into the office maybe once or twice. But today is a work from home day. So. Okay, so we've got the first break of the day, and I usually take breaks when my colleagues who still work in the office go take a break. They go grab a coffee. It takes them about five to ten minutes, so I just do some review for five to ten minutes. Now, before I did the、uh, Chinese speaking,、um, I still got Chinese listening on my decks to do, 
and I've also got um, German passive. Now, I've, I'm going to do the German passive just because I feel like I don't want to do the Chinese right this second. I just did Chinese, so let's do the German passive. Sein Messer ist scharf. So he's basically saying his knife is sharp. Ihr Schlafzimmer ist dunkel. Her bedroom is dark. Du hebst das Spielzeug auf. You pick up the toy. Das Fenster. The window. Der Tyrann ist klein. The bully is small. War auf dem Bett. Um, what is on the bed? Was on the bed. War auf dem Bett. War. Um, I noticed with German that... <coughs> Well, this is the one annoying thing with German, okay? So with German, there's a lot of similarity sounding words with English that actually don't have the same meaning at all. A good example is the word, um, I think it's wer, which means uh, who, but it sounds like where, and my brain just automatically always goes to where. <laughs> so it confuses the hell out of me. Er es nicht. Um, he doesn't want it. Wissen. Uh, to, we know. No, no, no. Der Junge hebt das Buch auf. Uh, the boy picks up the book. Now, you're probably hearing quite an artificial voice at the moment. Uh, what that is, is I basically, I make all my cards myself. I don't download decks or anything because I actually find that the creation process helps me to learn the sentences. So this here is actually a recording of Google Translate's voice. Now, how good is that voice? Like the quality? Well, it seems to be good enough because, uh, especially for German, because um, these words, when I learn them in here and I watch a German video passively later on, I will hear the words randomly pop out of sentences or even short phrases pop out. So I know it's good enough. But if you guys can like recommend a good text to speech for German, I would, I'd really appreciate it. Preferably a female voice, because I prefer listening to females <laughs> over men. Um, although, all my uh, Chinese is actually a male's voice, funnily enough. So, the Chinese deck is all male, the German deck is all female, and the Esperanto deck doesn't have any audio. So. Kommen Sie raus. Um, come, uh, you come out, so come out, basically. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly complete this. I've got basically 36 cards left in my German passive deck, uh, my audio deck. And then I've got to get back to work because my colleagues will be back from grabbing their coffee. Yeah, they'll definitely be back soon. Okay, so I will talk to you guys in a sec. Okay, so I've just got out of a meeting which gives me about five, five minutes or so to myself before I should get back to programming. Uh, I only have the Chinese deck left now if you have a look here. Um, so I have, I think that's 80 cards to do. So I'm going to quickly smash this out. Let's begin. Uh, mosquitoes generally live near rivers. Wenzi Tong Chang Sheng Huo Zai He Bian. Yep. Uh, what is in the crab pot? Pang Xie Long Li Yo Shen Ma. How many fishing rods do you have? Ni Yo Duo Shao Gun. Ni Yo Duo Shao Gun Diao Gun. Ni Yo Duo Shao Gun Diao Gun. Oh, I started my Chinese uh, review on the chair and eventually made my way to the bed. I'm down to the last seven reviews now. So let's just quickly finish these off. So some crabs live in rivers. Oh no, some crabs live on, what was I thinking, on land. At the end of like my Chinese study, my brain starts getting fried. Stingrays are generally grey. And that's an interesting the word for stingray, Mogwayu, is actually like devil fish in a way. Mogwe. It's like devil. Uh, where's McDonald's? My Dung Lao Zai Nali. Oh, this one, because it's a long one. Oh, okay. So this fish has... 
silver tail fin. 这条鱼有一片银色的尾鳍。这条鱼有一片银色的尾鳍。蚊子是一种昆虫。So, um, a mosquito is a kind of insect, and they're using the more like a、uh, written word or more precise word for insect. So, 蚊子是一种昆虫。蚊子是一种昆虫。我想要上传到油管。I want to upload a video to YouTube. Hey， 我想，我想要上传。啊、uh,。我想要上传到油管。哦、oh, ，I want to upload to YouTube. 我想要上传到油管。鱼的鳞片表面很滑。The surface of the fish's scales is slippery. 鱼的鳞片表面很滑。鱼的鳞片表面很滑。哇。Okay. And you know, I was talking about the whole gym thing before. It's kind of like the gym. At the end of like my review part of my day, I literally review until exhaustion. It's like at the gym where you're meant to push until you can't push anymore, and you you physically your muscles stop. That's me right at the end of that. Like I pushed right until I was physically could not push anymore. Like well, mentally couldn't push anymore, and I, I'm burnt out now.、Um, but the good thing is I get to go do programming, which is more relaxing for me. And then、uh, lunchtime we shall actually start learning some new stuff. Okay, guys, it's now officially lunchtime, which means. Language studying time. Just gotta open my drink because this is gonna get me through this sesh. Okay, so basically what I've decided I'm going to do today is I'm going to do active study of Chinese. I'm going to create somewhere between thirty and forty new Anki cards.、Uh, they will be audio cards,、um, and I I was planning to do some German to create some German passive cards, but. It's been a pretty hectic morning this morning, so I don't know if I'm going to get around to doing that today.、Uh, and also, today is Wednesday, funnily enough, so the Esperanto House will be open tonight. So I'm thinking, depending on how I'm feeling at the end of the day, I might actually head there and see if there's any Esperanto speakers to drop by and chat with. So I have to pick a topic of study, and yesterday my final topic of study was mosquitoes and. They are and mosquito-related words and phrases and stuff like that. So I think I'll continue on from there. I'm gonna pick a sea animal, some some other like common, common Australian river animal. Let's have a look. Okay, so I just found this random picture, and here I can see an eel right in the middle, and I can see lobster, long sha. I can see、uh, some prawns or shrimps, which is sha. I can see zuyu, which is some mullets. Um, tinu,、uh, which is a goldfish. So I'm going to do something regarding eels. So let's. That's going to be today's focus. We're going to learn about eels in Mandarin Chinese. Okay.、Uh, so first, let's open up a notepad. And the first, and I always want to reuse vocabulary I've recently studied. To build new sentences, so I keep building on top of what I've learnt. So first up, I, I say,、um, how do I say a eel in Chinese?、Um, in Chinese, and then I also say, please include the measure word and use the most common term for eel. The reason I I ask ChatGPT to include the measure word is because measure words are kind of like with um German das, uh, die, uh, der, you know these words, um they're kind of linked to the actual noun itself. But for、uh, Chinese, a measure word is used for numbers. So you, instead of saying a dog, you'd say one dog. 一只狗 or 一条狗 So some words have multiple measure words, and measure words also change depending on um context in some ways. But most Things have a common measure word, and I'm pretty sure an eel is just e jir because jir is used for like small animals, especially ones that have limbs and stuff and water. And what are they suggesting here? So no, they're they're suggesting e tiao shang yu. So tiao means a long thin thing, which I guess makes sense because an eel is a long thin thing.、Um, so I guessed wrong there, but that's my first one. So e tiao shang yu, and what I'll just do is. Uh, I will grab that. 
that would literally be my first card and I'll say uh, eel and I'll just double check chat GPT because you're probably freaking out right now saying oh my god Richard you're using an AI to learn languages um, that's not a not a smart move it's gonna make mistakes and all sorts of stuff I've actually found with Chinese that it is really good so the reason being is because I'm at a state in Chinese where I can look at something and go no no that that seems fishy you know that that doesn't seem right and there's only been a few times with chat gpt where it's made suggestions and stuff for sentences well for grammar and stuff it's usually perfectly fine like 99 percent of the time but for some words it will suggest words which aren't the most common forms of a word like for example i learned um hong yu and yao yu both mean stingray before i learned mo gui yu i don't know why it decided to teach me those words for stingray and then eventually i learned more you it taught me that like if you ask it enough times in different sentences and structures it will start suggesting words and be like hey you know what? i already learned a word for that but you know that's not lost vocab or anything it just means i know three different words for stingray now and yeah so and then there's like a few other ones like sometimes it would suggest um kun chong instead of chongzi like chongzi is the most common word for an insect and kun chong um, is like the technical word for an insect, but the difference is also chongzi, although it can mean insect, it can also mean small things like worms and stuff, so it's not necessarily just insects. Uh, so you just got to be a little bit smart about how you use it, pretty much. So, I've got my word for an eel, and I'm going to also ask it, so how do I say um, eels generally live in shallow water. I actually, I, I'm pretty sure I know this. It would just be, um, uh, what's the word for eel? Shan yu tong chang sheng huo zai qian chui zu or qian chui zhong. So let me just double check. But that's okay if I already know the structure. So shan yu tong chang sheng huo zai qian chui zhong. Yeah, so I was right. Um, because what I'm doing is I'm wrapping this word eel in lots of other sentences that I do know already. So I want to learn it in as I want to learn this word in context as much as possible. So uh, eels generally live in shallow water. So all those words in that sentence I know except for the word eel. So I'm going to learn it in context. So I'm going to make three sentences now using words that I've already learned in the past. Um, and putting it in context. So I'll say, um, what color are eels? Let's have a look. Uh, I guess they're a brown color. So I'll say, how do you say uh, eels, uh, eels are generally a brown color? And I'm guessing it would just say, shan yu tong chang shi zong se da. Yeah, shan yu tong chang shi zong se da. Yep, cool, got that one. Eels are generally a brown color. So I'm going to do a couple more of these. I'll cut until I've done them because you get the idea. Okay, so here's a, a great example. So the other day I learned the word for seaweed is haital, which literally means ocean grass. Okay, cool. And then I just asked it, how do I say um, some e eels live among seaweed? And I was expecting to know what the rest of that sentence was. And it suggested... Uh, but I was expecting So now I've learned that there's this other word for seaweed. So we've got hai zao. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to say, what is the difference between hai zao and, and I also need to, I'm just going to use Google Translate um, just so I can easily type out pinyin. I've actually got a pinyin keyboard installed, but I just can't be bothered swapping constantly between them. So I'm just going to say hai tzal. Yep, that's the one seaweed. So I'm going to say, what is the difference between hai tzal and hai tzal? And let's see what it suggests. Hai tzal uh, refers to seaweed. It encompasses a wide variety of marine algae that can be found in oceans and other bodies of water. Okay. And then hai tzal is a more general term that translates to seagrass or marine grass. It refers to various types of underwater plants that grow in aquatic environments, including seagrasses. Okay, so I'm guessing that hai tzal and hai tzal, so hai tzal is just like a general term and hai tzal is a more specific term for seaweed. So if we quickly just go have a Google look at these images, so this is another way I can just tell, is I just open up and I, I search for Google images and I go straight to, um, 
I'm actually, why is it on Yahoo? Oh, because I'm using Edge. Hi, Tal. So here we've got a pretty general looking type of seaweed. Cool, okay, let's go have a look at Hytal. And go to images. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so it's definitely, Hytal is like any type of seaweed that you would expect, grasses, algae, that type of stuff, while Hytal seems to be like a very special type of planted seaweed. It looks like the one that you might eat type of thing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to learn Haidzal as well. So I'm going to use the sentence to learn two words in context. And I'm adding Haidzal as a new word to the top of my list of words I'm going to learn today. I should actually up the scale on this so you guys can see. So let's just go. So you guys can see that. So this also means seaweed. And then we're going to go, cool. Um, some eels live among seaweed. So now um, there's two words I want to learn to describe water. I want to learn muddy water versus clear water. I'm guessing clear water would be something like ting, ting, because ting's like a blue or clear. And I know the word for mud is ni, so I'm guessing it'd be like ni shui and ting shui. So let's just quickly check. So I'll say, how do you say clear water and muddy water. So let's have a look. Okay, I was pretty close. So, ting shui, I was right about that one. That means clear water. Hun shui, I don't know what hun here means by itself. Let's just drop that one straight into Google Translate, hun by itself. Ah, apparently it's another word for muddy. So there's two words, ni and hun. So I'm going to learn both of these, but I'm not going to learn them as standalone words like this. Like, I don't like learning like that. So I'm going to say, how do you say mud crabs live in muddy water? Because that I, I know the word for mud crab is ni xie. So you say ni xie sheng huo zai hun shui zhong. Okay, cool. So I'm going to add that to my list. So mud crabs live in muddy water. Now, I'm going to continue doing this until I've got myself 30 sentences or so. And then I will continue with the recording, otherwise I'm going to lose so much time. Okay, so I've finished my active study and I've created what's going to be 45 new audio cards, which consists of about 11 new words, although a few of those words are variations of the same word uh, in context, and probably like maybe four to six like structures. Some of those structures I assume, the grammatical structures I mean, I kind of already knew, but some of them are kind of also new to me. Uh, so I am now going to create some audio cards. Now I'll show you how I create my audio cards. I'm not going to go through all of them, but like I'll show you a couple. So what I do is I grab this first one here. Obviously I'm going to need my headphones for this. Um, I come up to this website I'm using, which is just uh, text2voice.online. I'll make sure I'm on the mail one. I've got Audacity open. I just hit record, although that should actually be set to digital loopback. Okay, so that works. So now I've created this uh, audio card, uh, which you can't really see. That. Well, I haven't created the card yet, but I've created the sound file. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go grab that part, go file, export, and I'm going to export it to an audio. And you might be thinking, damn, this is a lot of work to create one card. And in some ways you are right, but this is also a practice session for me now. So I hear this word and then I repeat it. Hi, Dal. And I know what it is, obviously it's a seaweed. And then I go over to my Anki, and then I go into my Chinese listen and I add it. So I pull it in, and this is just gonna come directly from my downloads. Just copy that in. I hear it again, Hai Zhao. I put in the Chinese characters so I visually see it, and then I just type seaweed. And there we go, that's the first card. So. That's basically the process, and then I just repeat that about 40 times. Uh, but by the end of this, it means I've repeated each one of these sentences and phrases probably like a good six times, and I actually know it by the end. And the, the Anki cards 
almost become redundant, but they don't because like in a few weeks when they pop up again, it kind of refreshes the whole thing. But I, I take the card creation process as actually part of the learning process, even though there's a little bit of like extra tedious work in here. There's probably quicker ways to do this and people are probably screaming at me saying, dude, you're like the most inefficient learner in the world. And you're probably right, but I enjoy doing it this way. And it allows me to just randomly in the moment create sentences that pique my interest. You know, like I decided today I wanted to learn about eels and like muddy environments and stuff like that. Like that was just what I wanted to do today. Some days I don't know, other days I've got a, like a really set idea about what I want to learn, maybe based on some conversation, but that's basically the process. So I'm going to go through this now. <sighs> okay, so I'm about, I'm over halfway through uh, creating all the audio cards for my Anki deck and again, brain is fried. Um, it's end of lunch break literally now. Luckily, I'm not hungry. So I'm going to go back to work for a few hours. And then during the next break and possibly after work, I'll have to finish off the rest of these audio cards. I made quite a few today. Okay, so I have now finished creating the listening cards. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create the speaking cards. So the speaking cards are quite easy um, and usually only take a couple of minutes. So all I do is I go into my listening deck, I grab 30 listening cards, I flip them around and create speaking cards. And I started the the oldest in the listening deck and I move forward and every time I move forward I put like just a tag just to show that's where I'm up to in the in the listening deck as having created speaking cards. That way, when I'm creating speaking cards, I'm creating speaking cards for cards that I've already heard probably for a good month or so. Uh, and it means that I already have a pretty good intrinsic um, passive like ability to just know the sentence and say it. Uh, that way, it's actually not difficult. Like I, I smash through the speaking ones, but it's a way of just ensuring that I am able to say what I can hear. Anyway, I'm going to quickly create those and then that will be it during the work hours. What is my cat up to? Cat's like scratching at the door. Um, that will be it for uh, now and then later tonight I may go to the Esperanto house but I'm feeling a little bit burnt but we shall see. It's now 8 o'clock at night. I ended up going to the Esperanto house but overall it was kind of a bust because one, when I headed off it started raining and I got wet. Two, when I arrived I realized I forgot the uh, memory card for this camera. So I couldn't really film anything even if I wanted to. And three, well, pretty much no one else showed up. A few people showed up, but it wasn't like enough to make it like a worthwhile experience overall. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of a bust, but I'm hoping that by making these videos here again, um, the local Sydney Esperanto speakers may see them and start thinking, hey, let's head to the Esperanto house on Wednesdays. So if you do live in Sydney and you're an Esperanto speaker, start heading there again on Wednesdays and maybe we'll bump into each other. Um, so I also plan today to do some German study and adding cards to my Anki deck, but it's a bit late now and I kind of just want to get this video done and uploaded. So I'm going to pretty much close it up here and I just want to get your feedback. This is going to be a pretty long video. It's going to be quite long form and it's not really going to be heavily edited. Uh, it's really just going to be my experience through the grind of learning languages. So yeah, uh, let me know if you've enjoyed this at all or if you don't like this content. That's pretty much it. Catch you guys.